Hey everyone, before the video starts, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to my friend Godlimation, or Mr. Menthanon, as some of you may know him on Dueling Book, uh, but he is the one who initially inspired me to make Rikas in the first place, and uh, he and I have been working on this list for quite some time now. I would say honestly the last couple of months, but more specifically the last like week or two. Uh, we've been fine crafting this deck and just making it as best as possible. And uh, honestly, a lot of this couldn't have been done without him, so I just wanted to give him a huge shout out. Uh, with all that said, enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome to the in-depth analysis of Rika for the March 2021 format. So this is the build that I uh, ended up getting first place at. If you are interested in watching the deck profile, I'm going to be putting a title card up right now. You can go ahead and hit that and watch that video. But uh, this is the entirety of the main deck. Uh, and I have it a little split up here uh, so that we can kind of go through it together. Um, but if you just want a quick deck profile, I would highly suggest just watching that video. Um, so uh, we're going to start over here in this top left section. Uh, this is basically just consistency cards. So ideally you want to see one one of these 10 cards here being the three copies of Lone Fire, three Petal, one Glamour, one One for One. So these all do the same thing uh, as that they get to your copy of Rika Petal. So Rika Petal is very important in this deck because it is your, uh, basically your starter and it is your grind gain, which is really important. I guess you can also technically group Prada Prosperity because if Prosperity sees any of these cards, you add the Petal as well. Uh, but this is also just, it can add like anything. So it's kind of just like a blank spot in the deck if we're being honest so um but yeah you do want to see one of these two cards uh and it's very good to see in multiples unless if the multiple is you see any of these two the one for one or the pedal like if you see like one for one pedal it's fine because you can usually just one for one the pedal away to get a pedal from deck so it's like okay but uh typically you don't want to see uh two copies of any of these four cards right here but seeing uh two copies of like any of these is fine uh, unless if you don't see like like seeing like obviously if you see like two lone fires it kind of sucks two copies of like glamour two copies of petal it kind of sucks but um you can like see like uh like a petal a lone fire and a glamour and that hand is like nuts um so that's kind of the idea here you can also see like snowdrop or mudan but these aren't like exactly the right ones because like usually your lone fire or your glamour get to these two cards these are like the two cards that you do like the mid combo with so that's like the uh why those are here as well they're not like the starters that you want to see but they're good to see if you open like petal snowdrop it's good petal mudan is good uh etc something like that so uh basically you just want to see uh petal for sure and then if you see an extra one of these you can get into your combo which we'll be going into later um then moving on to, into the rest of the cards i guess we'll talk really quick about mudan here mudan just searches for obviously glamour or sheet which is really good uh the sheet is actually really good and this uh severely overperformed and in future builds i'm definitely going to be playing two copies of this because if you saw this in your opening hand it was honestly better than searching it in some cases because some cases you just can't search the sheet you like you have to search glamour which really sucks but um having the sheet like already in your hand just made the de like hand so much better because like glamour is just follow up it's just so much utility in the deck it was just fantastic uh then we have Primula and world uh champion carrot weight so he's kind of hidden there but uh that is the card that he is um so there is a situation post turn three or four i'll explain it really quickly but once we get to the combo portion of this video uh you'll be uh, understanding that a little more so uh basically when Petal comes back on turn two, or I guess it is turn three, so uh, you're basically the, your opponent's end phase, then you can go ahead and use Petal's effect to search for Mudan, and then Mudan's going to search Glamour, and then Glamour, you're going to tribute the Mudan uh, and search for Primula and Carrot Weight, which you haven't used your normal summon yet, and on resolution, Primula's going to activate to summon itself, and then you're going to normal summon your Carrot Weight, which gets you access into Strena. So that's actually really good, because then Strena can then add back either the Mudan or the Sheet, or it can add back just like a Snowdrop that you've already used on turn one, or something like that. It's just fantastic. Uh, Super Poly is here because this is obviously a card that you, I think you honestly have to play because there are some situations where you can't get some certain monsters off the field. For example, if your opponent hits you with a uh, like a Dragoon, then you, your deck has a natural out to Dragoon in the forms of going into Verte, into Super Poly, and Super Poly into Chimera Flasia, or for the Trioverity of the one that requires three Dark Monsters. So 
Uh, the problem is that, you know, obviously Petal locks you into plants, but fortunately for us, the Predaplant plant fusions are plant monsters, so we can still go into those under uh, Verte. Um, we can, like, you know, make Verte and then go into those instead of, like, starving Venom. Uh, Fairy Archer Ingunar is a monster that you can also search off of, like, um, I guess Glamour, technically, if you tribute a monster, then search, like, Mudana in it. It's not, like recommended that you do that uh typically you get access to this card through either snowdrops effect or with lone fire blossom 99 percent of the time i would say it's lone fire blossom that gets you access access into this card um i guess jasmine does get you access to it as well but um that's not super uh relevant it does come up sometimes but not very often um it's a very fantastic card being able to bring back mudan uh and then get a search for like glamour is like insane plus like you have a ton of monsters on the field at that point so you can just go into like verte jasmine you can typically just make like kanzashi which is also really good um but yeah it's absolutely insane then uh obviously three copies of gamma three copies of ash these are just hand traps so if you're noticing in this deck gamma is actually fantastic because if you look here you have one for one glamour lone fire prosperity and fury of kairushin that all at the same time will have no monsters on the field when you activate them or um i mean usually you will like later in the game you will have monsters on the field but i mean like if you draw them in your opening can you activate these and then if your opponent hits you with ash you chain gamma which is absolutely fantastic because you have i think that's 12 that i listed there um three six nine uh 10 11 12 yeah 12 uh cards that you you can chain gamma to to an ash right so that's like absolutely insane um obviously three copies of ash i think that it is a very car uh, important card this format it's you know just the most versatile card it hits everything uh two copies of kairu shin uh to search for torrential uh, i think i only drew this card like once or twice but i think that it was like pretty decent honestly searching the torrential uh forcing out their ash if they don't want to deal with torrential is also like pretty decent uh all things considered and then having the graveyard protection is also pretty nice to protect all of your waters which is your entire deck uh outside of like fairy archer lone fire like gamma uh, then like i guess carrot weed as well but like uh and obviously like the extra deck but i mean it does protect your entire rika engine which is actually insane uh then moving on into trap cards uh two ice dragons person two rivalry two torrential uh, i've decided on the two 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 ratio because i was trying to test everything out in hindsight rivalry is absolute garbage so um right now uh if i'm just looking at this list right now uh, just like that i would change immediately i would be adding a second copy of sheet and i'd probably be adding an ice dragons prison to three uh, and that just gets rid of your rivalry so if you want to be playing this deck i would highly recommend you do that immediately um all i also you can just replace these with nibiru's that's also an option uh torrential was fantastic three copies of strike this card was a card that you keep in your deck always even if you're going first or second like uh typically if you're going um like into game two and you expect them to go first you set out your trap cards like these three um because they're just not very good uh same thing with the fury so that get, that gives you eight spots that you could side out into which is pretty nice but uh usually you keep the strikes in because these are cards that are good going first or second uh which is actually really crazy i mean it is a trap card so it doesn't seem like it would be but it actually is like pretty nice uh even going second and setting the strike uh but that's going to do it for the main deck portion of the video so we're going to head over to the side and extra deck so this is the side and extra deck that we ended up playing for this event as well so i ended up deciding on these six rika cards uh and the reason for that is that two drop is the most important so i decided to play three copies of it but in future builds i think i will be cutting it down to two because the third one just never came up sometimes the second one came up so i guess you could if you really wanted to you could cut it to one uh as well with strena i think you should or not should but you definitely could cut strena down to one uh but i probably won't i will probably be playing the two to one ratio moving forward uh kanzashi is a card that you basically have to have in your deck because there's a specific otk with kanzashi and teardrop that uh everyone should basically know if you're playing this deck uh 100 if you are playing rikas you should be knowing the teardrop kanzashi otk uh, which i will be getting to in a moment as well so uh then moving on into like the other extra deck cards uh we have alci fairy knight ingunar and the sacred true beast up at the top so these are basically just our utility cards that we can play 
Uh, I'll say it's fantastic, especially if Teardrop, like, is, like, not exactly sub... It's, like, really subpar. Uh, but I'll say can honestly just put your opponent in a really awkward position, especially if you're already... Uh, you already have, like, your tempo established. You can just make I'll say and then bounce, like, one of their back row to the top of their deck. And then it basically just stacks their draw, so they're drawing a bad card. Uh, it's very reminiscent of Yada locking them, but obviously... Uh, they're still getting the card back, it's just that they're not getting any new card to work with, which is actually pretty good. Uh, Fairy Knight Inkunar is a card that I think is um, something that I might keep in for a little bit, but I think it's also droppable from the list. But there are a couple situations where you just want to out a specific card, non-targeting, destruction, removal, which I think Fairy Knight is very good at. There is a combo that gets to it, but you have to have a Rika uh, pedal in your graveyard and either Snowdrop, Mudan, uh, Snowdrop or Mudan in your hand. But it, it does definitely still work. Sake of Tree Beast Hyperiton is another card that uh, is honestly really good to summon off of Strena here. Um, so this is like really good like longevity wise. Uh, as you're noticing like Teardrop is only good for like two maybe three turns uh, because you only have the two materials to detach from her. But uh, Sacred Tree Beast can keep acquiring materials like nonstop, just forever throughout the duel, which is really insane. Especially because you're always bringing back your pedal, so you're always at least attaching one monster material to this card. Uh, Aroma Seraphini Jasmine is a card that I'm going to be cutting from the list, as well as the Vampire Dude. So the Vampire Dude is the only card outside of uh, Omega that is a non-plant monster that we're actually playing in the extra deck that we reliably go into. And, um, I think that is just okay. Like, okay, so honestly, on paper, the, the effect of it is just bonkers. You can just non-target send something your opponent controls to the graveyard. Uh, I think it actually does target. I actually don't. Yeah, it does target, but it sends it to the graveyard, which is actually insane. Uh, the, if you read this card, you're going to think like, wow, this card is super good, especially you're, because you're playing like Ice Dragon's Prison and Rika Sheet can take control of your opponent's cards. So like... It just sounds so good on paper, but at that point, like, why would you go into Vampire when you can just go into Teardrop instead? Um, and I think that it's just not as important to go into it because you're already winning the game when you summon this card. So I don't think it's very necessary. Um, Jasmine, I think that the problem with Jasmine is why would you make Jasmine when you can make any of your Xyz monsters instead? Um, I don't think that Jasmine has a whole lot of situations where it comes up in this build specifically. If you're playing a combo variant, I think that Jasmine is probably necessary, but in this build it is something that I honestly am really um, not very happy that I had this card in my extra deck. Uh, the last card in the extra deck is obviously Omega for the Gamma. Uh, I think that the side deck is um, not particularly... I don't think we really need to go into it. I think it kind of explains itself. Um, I think the only thing to explain is the Dark Ruler just to negate, obviously, like, your opponents, like, if they hit you with the Barrier Statue combo, you can just Dark Ruler them and continue play, but that's about it. Um, I think in the future, these should probably be Cosmic Cyclones. I think that's about it. So, uh, we will be moving on into the combo portion of this video. All right, so for the first little combo that I want to show, it's just a one-card combo to get at least one interruption. Um, I don't think it's, like, super great, but um, it does do something on its own, which is pretty nice. So uh, you go with a normal summon a pedal, and then you can use the effect to grab a Rika uh, Mudan from your deck to hand, and then you can use Mudan's effect to tribute the pedal, special summon the Mudan, and use Mudan's effect to add Rika Sheet from your deck to your hand. And then you can obviously just set the Sheet and pass your turn. So uh, Sheet is very similar to Widow Anchor because you tribute a plant monster, well, basically you target a monster in your opponent's field, and then if you tribute a plant monster, you can uh, take control of that monster uh, but neither player can activate its effects and it becomes a plant monster so the really nice thing about this card is that obviously it becomes a plant monster so it doesn't lock you if you want to summon back your pedal during the end phase uh, obviously you usually just give it control even if it wasn't a plant monster but uh, in either situation you can still uh, take one of your opponent's cards and basically stop it from activating effects the important thing to know with this is that if the monster has an effect on summon uh, Rika sheet doesn't negate it because the card has already been activated so that is something to note with this card uh, also, the nice thing about this combo is even if you use everything in this combo, during the end phase, your Rika Petal will come back because you have no monsters on the field. Or even if you don't use the combo and you have the Moon on the field, you can still bring the Rika Petal back because you have plant monsters on the field. So in either situation, it is honestly really good. The next combo requires any way to Rika Petal and any way to either Mudan or to Snowdrop. 
Uh, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and showcase you with Rika Glamour and with Snowdrop. So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to activate Rika Glamour and search for our copy of Rika Petal. And then we are going to go ahead and normal summon our Petal and search for our copy of Udon. So uh, this does get you access into all three monsters. And then you can go ahead and use your Snowdrop effect, which will tribute your Mudan as or your Petal as cost. Uh, it is important that this card is revealed in your hand at this point and you have no cards on the field. So if they do negate this, you will still have no monsters on the field. Moving on, we go ahead and summon both, and then we're going to use our Mudan effect to pick up a copy of Rika Sheet. And then we can use Snowdrop's effect to make everything a level 8 monster, and then we're going to overlay these two cards for our copy of Teardrop. So the nice thing about this is that we do have an interruption, I guess two interruptions if you count the Rika Sheet, which is pretty good. Two cards, two interruptions, and then the rest of your hand you can probably just set to the field or use as hand traps, which is pretty nice. Uh, also, there is a variance of this combo that instead of going for your Teardrop, you can actually go for Alsai if you are going second and then just bounce something back in, like your opponent's back row back into your deck if you are playing against like a back row deck. So that is important to note. And also, similarly, if you uh, have these two monsters on the field, instead of going for your copy of the um, the teardrop or the Elsai, you can actually just go into Verte Anaconda. Uh, Verte Anaconda then can uh, change opponent's monster, one of your opponent's monsters, to a dark attribute, and then you can send the Super Poly to the graveyard, use the Verte and their dark monster, or just a couple dark monsters on the field, and then you can go into the Chimera Flesia, which requires a plant, Predator Plant monster and a dark monster. And the nice thing about this is that Predator Plant Chimera Flesia is actually a plant, so you can still activate Rika Sheet to tribute it as well. Uh, keep in mind that during your opponent's end phase, you will be getting your Rika Petal back as well, so you still have follow-up for the next turn. The next combo I have for you is a variation of the last combo, but it doesn't really look like it would work, uh, but it definitely does. So we're going to go through it really quick. So we're going to normal summon our copy of Rika Petal. You can obviously use Glamour to search Petal or one for one to get it to the field as well. Then you can go ahead and use Rika Petal's effect, which will grab you a copy of Snowdrop from the deck to your hand. Obviously, you have to go specifically for Snowdrop in this combo. You can't go for Mudan, and I'll show you why here in a second. We're going to tribute our copy of Petal to special summon the copy of Snowdrop and the copy of Lone Fire Blossom from our hand, and then we're going to use the Lone Fire Blossom to special summon our copy of Mudan, and Mudan is going to get us access into our sheet. So this does the exact same thing. Obviously, then you can turn these two into your copy of Teardrop or into, you know, Verte, or you can do basically whatever you want with this. Uh, so it's the exact same thing. It just does seem like it seems a little weird because you do have two monsters that uh, at first glance don't really do a whole lot in your hand but um, they do uh, the same thing as the last combo as well. This next combo only requires Rika Petal in the graveyard, so it's actually a very low resource combo that is really fantastic. So uh, at your opponent's end phase, you're going to use your Rika Petal's effect to uh, special summon it back to the field, and you're going to draw for turn. I'm not going to draw in this case because the draw is completely irrelevant. Then we're going to use a Rika Petal's effect to search for a Rika monster from deck to hand. We're going to add Mudan in this case. Mudan is going to tribute the Petal to special summon itself, and we're going to use the effect to pick up Rika Glamour from the deck to hand. And we're going to go ahead and immediately activate it, tributing the Mudan. So this is going to add a Rika monster from our deck to hand and a plant monster with the same level. So we're going to be adding Carrot Weight from our deck to hand as well. Then on the resolution, since a plant monster was tributed, you can use Primula's effect to summon it to the field. And then you're going to go ahead and normal summon your copy of Carrot Weight. Then you have two level fours on the field, so you can obviously just go into your copy of Strena. Strena that can, then can detach your uh, Carrot Weight, and you can add back any of these cards cards back to your hand which is actually insane for the next turn so you can add back a moved on if you so wish and then uh you're in a really good position if you do happen to have a snowdrop also in your hand what you can do is at this point then you can activate your snowdrop effect to tribute your strena special summon itself and special summon the mudan and then you can use your strena's effect which will get you a teardrop or instead if you don't want to go for teardrop you can go for the sacred tree beast uh, and then you can actually just use your Snowdrop effect to make everything 8s, and then you can overlay into Alsai or Teardrop, so you do have a lot of options here. You do have a Monster Negate and a Tribute in this specific case that I have on the field, and this is actually a really good situation that you're in. This next combo is a variation of the last one, uh, but it's if you already have Glamour in your hand, you can do this combo instead, but you do have to have the Mudan in the graveyard, but this can be uh, a little bit better, honestly. So during your opponent's end phase, you bring back the pedal back from the graveyard, you draw for turn, doesn't matter what you draw here, 
You then uh, can use Petal's effect to pick up anything from your deck. It doesn't matter what you can pick up. You can pick up a Snowdrop in this case, uh, but the card that you add off of Petal is just a nice resource that you can use for a later turn. Then you can go ahead and activate your copy of Glamour, and you can attribute your copy of Petal to pick up the Permula and the Carrot Weight. Then similarly, you use the Permula effect and you normal summon your Carrot Weight. Uh, and this is pretty good because then you can then overlay these two cards for your copy of Strena, Detach from your Strena to add back the Mudan from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, if you happen to activate or grab a Snowdrop in this case, it's actually pretty good since then you contribute your Strena with your Snowdrop. If not, and you want to use your card for a later turn, that's also fine. Then you contribute your Strena and then just go for uh, Mudan. And then Strena is going to use its effect and you're going to uh, summon any plant from your uh, extra deck. Obviously, you can also get the Mudan uh, search here as well, which is pretty nice to search for a copy of Rika Sheet. Uh, which I uh, failed to get from my deck, but uh, it does put two interruptions on the board, which is still pretty good. Uh, and then obviously if you have the Snowdrop, you can go for an Alsai, or you can go for, uh, instead of going for the Teardrop, you can just use the Teardrop with the Snowdrop and the uh, Mudan, and then this can be the uh, tree, uh, the Monster Decay dude uh, in that situation. This next combo is something really cool that you can do to basically just clear your opponent's field, which is pretty nice. So it requires either Snowdrop or Mudan in hand, and then obviously a Petal in the graveyard. So during your opponent's turn, you go ahead and special your Petal to the field, and then you draw for turn, and then you use your Petal effect to pick up a Mudan from your deck to your hand, and then you use the Snowdrop effect to special summon itself and the Mudan. Mudan's effect is going to go ahead and special, or not special, but add a Rika Glamour from your deck to your hand. Then you can go ahead and use the Rika Glamour to tribute the Mudan specifically here, and then you're going to add the Carrot Weight and the Primula. Uh, just like in the last combos, and then use Primula's effect since a plant monster is tributed, and normal summon your carrot weight. Then you're going to use a Primula effect to make both of these level 6, and then you're going to use your Snowdrop effect to targeting either or, it doesn't matter, and then it's going to become a 6 as well. Then you overlay all three of these cards for your Fairy Knight Ingunar. So this requires three level 6 monsters specifically, and then you detach two materials. In this case, I'm going to detach Snowdrop and the uh, the World Champion carrot wait because the permula is not a very good card that you really want to like leave in your graveyard it just doesn't matter uh the snowdrop and the carrot we have more utility in the graveyard uh then your fairy knight is just going to uh send everything your opponent controls back to their hand and they can't respond to this they can't valor it they can't do anything they can't even strike it they have to strike the summon so it's pretty crazy and uh clears their entire field and then you can just punch for 22 it's pretty nice this next combo requires a little bit of setup, but it is uh, pretty common, and it will be a way to OTK your opponent, which is pretty nice. So, uh, during your opponent's end phase, you can use your Rika Petals effect. Typically, your graveyard will be looking like something like this anyways. You're going to special summon back your Petal, and you're going to draw for turn. If you draw into the Lone Fire Blossom, or if you already have it in your hand, this combo is really good. So then during the main phase, you're going to use your Rika Petals effect to grab your copy of Snowdrop, and then you're going to use your Snowdrop effect to tribute the Petal, special summon it and the Lone Fire Blossom from your hand, and then you're going to use the Lone Fire Blossom's effect to special summon your Fairy Archer Ingunar from your deck. Then you're going to use your Fairy Archer's effect, which will special summon back your Mudan from the graveyard, and you're going to use Mudan's effect to pick up your Rika Glamour. Then you're going to activate Glamour and just go ahead and search for literally anything. Rika Petal is fine in this case, because we haven't used our normal summon and then we're going to go ahead and i think it's nice here to actually first go for a overlay with inguinar and your uh your mudan and i didn't put the card in my extra deck uh quick editing skills here we're going to summon our copy of kanzashi which uh, provides some protection and a very important uh effect that we're going to be using in the battle phase then we're going to be normal summoning our copy of Rika Petal and using Snowdrop to make them both level 8 and then overlaying these two for your copy of Teardrop. So the really nice thing about this is that you can go into your battle phase and you can attack for 2800 and 2400 which is 5200 damage and then your opponent is at 2800 life points. Then from here to OTK your opponent you will be using your Teardrop's effect, detaching any material, doesn't matter, targeting the Teardrop and tributing itself. 
and then you're going to be using Kanzashi's effect since a monster was tributed. You can use its a second effect, which will de detach material, target a monster in either player's graveyard. In this case, we're going to be targeting a teardrop, summoning it back to the field, and since it is treated as a new monster, we can then attack for game. Uh, and this is exactly 8,000 damage total, or it's 28 and your opponent's at 2,800 life points. So either way, you're going to be winning the duel. Uh, sometimes you can actually summon like cards from your opponent's graveyard. Something like Dragoon is pretty funny to just snatch from the graveyard and then just attack with that for game uh which is actually pretty funny so there are actually a lot of ways to get to this combo but all you need to do is have a teardrop and a kanzashi on the field sometimes there are situations where you will be having your teardrop on the field already and then you can just go and find a way to get to kanzashi just off of the rika pedal obviously uh during your opponent's end phase you just bring back the pedal you can add for something like snowdrop and then if you have like any other plant monster in your hand um, typically if you have like a mudan or something in your hand you can do the same combo as well so there are a lot of ways to get to that but that is a uh, basically a combo that can get you into it that is pretty nice with no cards on the field that's going to do it for today's video so if you do have any other suggestions please put them in the comment section below i think that this deck is really fun to get into uh, and honestly it is a deck that i enjoy a lot so if you did enjoy this video i would uh, appreciate it if you did leave a like and i will see you guys later